Well, welcome back everybody to day four of the video blitz on the uh, construction of my Zenith 750 Super Duty. We've got this front windshield fit. My goal for today is to get this top window installed. Now this should be a pretty easy job because all I need to do is go through and drill some holes along each edge and the back. And then on the front here, this piece of aluminum gets uh, screwed to the top window or the, top, the front windshield and then the top window. Well, I think the first step in doing this is to mark a center line down the top of the rib. And one of the things you'll find yourself doing often in building an aluminum airplane is drawing lines a certain distance from the edge. For example, the center line on that rib. And I have this cool little tool that's made by my buddy Oliver. He's a Zenith cruiser builder. Uh, and it's, there's three different locations in here, eight, nine, and 10. I don't I think that's millimeters from the edge, but it's just a little plastic tool. And the way it works is you put it on the edge of your rib and I'm gonna use my workbench because I don't have a rib here. You put your pen in the location you want, which is whichever corresponds to the center line or the distance from the edge that you're looking for. And you just slide it along the edge like that. And it draws a perfect line wherever you want it. He does sell these. I'm not sure of the website offhand. When I edit this video, I will look it up and I'll put a link either on the screen or in the description box below if you guys wanna buy one. After marking a center line on the rib, I put the aluminum piece up there and made a dot where the first screw hole will go. And since all of the screws, obviously we want in a line down here, I'm gonna use this little tool to draw a line down there. Now this one just happens to fit right on there with the 10, I'm guessing that's 10 millimeter hole. It fits right over there. So I'm just gonna draw a line right down here. And then when I drill the holes through here that go into the top window, they'll all be evenly spaced from the edge. Hole number one on the top window is drilled. And it's kind of hard to show me, show you what I'm doing because I can't get the camera up this high. My tripod doesn't go this high. So I've drilled the hole and I'll kind of explain what I did. First, you'll notice on this aluminum piece, the lar there's a larger half and a smaller half. The larger half goes on the top. And through the window, I can see my center line here. So I pre-drilled the hole in the aluminum made sure the window was placed exactly where I wanted it, held the aluminum strip here, and then just drilled the hole down through the, the window and then the rib, and then I put a Clico on it. And then you can see after this is all fit, there's gonna be, I don't know, an eighth or three sixteenths here that will shave off on the edge of the window. You also notice I rounded the corner up here I sanded all of the edges smooth, except this because, if you can tell, this there's nothing under here. So what I'll wind up doing is, is cutting this away, kind of like that, just how I did on my cruiser, because this aluminum here doesn't attach to anything. Like I said, it's, I don't know if I could get a good camera angle to show you, but see how under here, there's nothing, there's no point in having that aluminum there. And what I'm gonna do is I'll slice it away like that. And on this airplane, I'm going to do what I wanted to do on my cruiser and never did. Once the wing is attached, I'm gonna build a fiberglass fairing that goes around here like this. Because in my cruiser, I get a lot of airflow through here, which is great in the summer, but in the winter, it's, it's like having freezing cold air blow on you. So I wanna make a fairing that really seals off this whole area up here. Plus, it just makes it look better. Step two is complete. Now what I've done is I've drilled a hole on the pilot side and a hole on the passenger side. Now, what that does is that locks everything in place. The window can no longer twist like this. Um, so everything's even now. The front is locked down. Now all I need to do is measure where I want the screws and then put the screws all the way back. Now what's kind of nice is having a completed airplane here, 
I can use that as a reference. And on the cruiser, it was every 3.75 in, 3 inches is where I had a screw. And so I'll, but I don't want to just blindly do that here because the flutes could be a little bit different on here than they were on a cruiser. But just to get an idea, that's about how I spaced the screws. But on here, obviously I want to do it according to where these flutes are because I don't want to drill a hole here and then have to put a, 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 a screw in there. Now I do think the plans call for rivets to rivet this top window on. I like using screws and a nut a lot better because there's less tension on it. So you're gonna, it's less likely to crack, I believe, than pulling a rivet there. And also, if I ever need to, I can remove the top window if it's just screwed in place. I've laid down a piece of masking tape here so that I can draw a little line where I wanna drill the holes. Now, what I've noticed with the way the flutes are on this rib, and keep in mind, you're, I think these are handmade at Zenith, so your flutes could be in different locations. But I know that I want a screw right here to hold down the front. And then you can see there's two flutes right here, and so I want one in between there. So I have these two here, and then there's another two flutes pretty much spaced evenly right here. So I have my first three holes located right here. And it's, it's pretty close spacing. I don't need to maintain that close of spacing all the way back uh, because the flutes are actually a lot further apart back here. So there's a flute here and here. So I'll put one in the center here. And then from here back, I'm gonna to try to evenly space them and hope that they're in between the flutes. But it looks like the first three holes here will be a little closer than the rest of the holes. And I, I could maintain that same spacing all the way back, but there'd be a lot more screws than I think is necessary to hold this on. So here's what I've started doing. These first three holes, one, two, three, are two and a quarter inches apart. And it goes back to here. Then I came back here, I measured three inches back, and that puts it pr approximately in the center of these two flutes. So then I wanted to see if I maintained that three inch spacing all the way back, if that would work. So here's a mark, here's a mark, that one would work fine. Here's a mark, that's getting close to the flute, but it's, it would still work. But if I go one more back at three inches, it's right over that flute. So I can't use a three inch spacing. So the trick now is just to play with it a little bit and see what spacing works so that all, none of the screws are on a flute. All right, here's a little update and a change. I drilled this as my second hole. And when I did that, I noticed how nicely this is being held down. And I was thinking I probably don't need so many screws up here. So what I've done, I've, I've measured a distance between here and here, and I took a, the half of that and I made a mark. So if I put another screw right here, that's gonna be plenty for up front. But what's nice about that is now, that distance, which was just less than four and a half inches, I can maintain all the way back uh, and I'll have even spacing for my screws the whole way. And it, it all works perfectly with where the location of these flutes are uh, in, in the ribs. So that'll work perfect. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna drill a few more holes and this side will be done. Well, I like it. This side is done. All of the holes are evenly spaced and it looks good. Now I'll go do the same thing on that side. Doing the exact same thing on this side, I measured from here back four and three eighths and I maintained that same spacing and everything works fine. So it looks like all the flutes on this rib are in the same spot as the ones on that rib. So it'll work perfect on this side too. Now it's just a simple matter of drilling all these holes and putting Clecos in just like I did on that side. Oh, right now, both sides are done. The next step is to remove this aluminum piece, pre-drill the holes on the top half, and then put it back on and match drill the holes through the Lexan. Now some of you guys are probably wondering if I'm using a special Lexan bit, and I'm not. I'm using a regular doll number 40 bit, and I can only talk to you from my personal experience, but I've done this the same exact way on four airplanes, and I just use a, dollar, a doll bit and I use a slow speed and I drill right through the Lexan. Never ever had a problem 
and I've never ever needed to use one of those expensive, hard to find Lexan drill bits. Well, rather than reinvent the wheel, I'm just going to measure the distance that I used on my cruiser, and I'll use that same distance on the Super Duty. And I really like these screws that I use too. They're Allen screws, they're nice and shiny, and I bought them at Ace Hardware. And that's what I've used for the aluminum piece and then all of the screws on the top there. Maybe on my Super Duty, I'll find some uh, black ones. In fact, these are the exact same screws I used for my center console screws, except I bought black ones. So actually, I think that's what I'll do on my Super Duty. Since it's you know, green and dull, I'll get the black screws instead of the nice silver ones. Well, one little step closer to finishing this airplane and getting it flying. So between this hole and the one on the very end was 980 millimeters. So I just divided this by 10 and I went every 98 millimeters and put a hole. I pre-drilled the aluminum, put it up here, and then just drilled through to, or drilled through the top window. I've went ahead and made marks for the back screws. And this was pretty easy. I just found the center rivet on the top of the fuselage, so that marks the center of the window. Then I took a distance between here and here, divided it by four, and I have my equal distance points. So now all those holes are marked and I just need to drill them through the window and then through the top skin. As you can see, these holes are drilled in the back. So they're all done. So the only thing left to do is drill the holes up front here through the spar. But one of the things I learned at Oshkosh this year with my cruiser is that when my cruiser is out in the rain, it just leaks like crazy. And I want to make this airplane completely watertight. So what I'm going to do is after these screws are in, I'm going to make a fairing that just goes along the back like this. It'll go around the whole back. And I'm also gonna make separate ones that close the gap between the top window and the wing. So, so obviously I can't make those until the wing is on. But then what I'll do is I'll just put you know a little bead of silicone on here put the fairing on top of there and probably some silicone on here and uh, make it as watertight as I possibly can. Well, I now have the top window fit and drilled. I've sanded the front edge, the back edge. I do still have to clean up the side edges yet. Uh, and then I have to drill the holes and down through the top windshield into the spar. But I don't wanna do that quite yet because I wanna get the screws first to make sure I'm drilling the holes to the proper size because what I do is I, I tap that spar and thread the screws into the spar. Plus, I just don't feel like working in here anymore. I wanna get some lunch, I wanna to get to the gym, and I just don't feel like being in here anymore. And the importance of that is to listen to yourself, because if you watch my mistakes video, which I did a while ago, one of the ways I usually screw up parts is working out here when I don't feel like being out here. <laughs> and I'm at that point right now where I've done enough, the top window is pretty much done. I don't feel like being in here, so I'm calling it quits for the day. That's the end of this video. I've, I leave tomorrow morning for a four day trip. After that, I have a couple weeks off of work. And uh, the next thing I think on the agenda is to get the doors uh, or to get the glass put onto the doors and then the doors will be all done. After that, I can actually paint the door frames. I can paint all these pieces up here and then all of this stuff will be ready to go or ready to bolt on once the airplane, the rest of the airplane is painted. So you guys have a good weekend and we'll see you next week.